Okay, thank you guys all for joining. Um, we're so happy that you're here. We're just gonna wait a bit more. I think everybody's joining. I think Gio's ready as well. So um, I know, I think some people had to make a Zoom account before they joined. So we wanna make sure people have time to do that. But yeah, we can go ahead and dive in. So thank you guys so much for coming. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us for our webinar, all about digital customer experience. So as we know, things have changed very rapidly over the last year plus. So um, today's presentation, we're talking a bit about how that has changed digital customer experience and how brands can adapt. So here's um, a quick agenda. We have a lot to cover today, um, a lot of really great information. So you can see we're gonna cover how digital transformation is driving the customer experience, optimizing the entire customer journey, understanding the evolving importance of trust through customer experience. Uh, most importantly, connecting data to customer experience. That's obviously very important building a customer centric culture, lasting trends that we might see stick around as well as um, a Q and A session at the end. So a few logistics, um, all of our participation, all of our participants are muted, no video, but if you do have questions and we would love to answer your questions at the end of the presentation. So go ahead, go ahead and ask those in the Q and A section on Zoom and we'll get those. We have our team monitoring those questions, so. Um, yeah, so we can go ahead and dive right in. So before we start, um, we can explain a bit about Smart Boost if you're not familiar. So Smart Boost, we are a data-driven, ROI-focused digital agency. We connect people with the best disruptive technology to provide our clients amazing customer experiences. From data science to digital marketing and web engineering, Smart Boost delivers customized solutions with measurable results. So without further ado, I'll pass the mic to uh, Gio, our host, CEO and founder, and we can jump right in. Thank you very much, Marina. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm Giovanni, uh, CEO of Smart Boost, as I said, Dick, uh, an entrepreneur specialist in marketing, uh, passionate about artificial intelligence, digital transformation, and of course, customer experience, things we're gonna talk today. Um, have we have been seeing technology keep transforming most industries uh, and businesses must focus on personalization to understand fast changing customer expectation. So today, if you go to the next slide, Marina, um, we are living in a very interesting year where our technology is completely disrupting our behavior like we can see on this picture. Um, this guy trying to fish to his screen. Might be a happen, maybe, uh, but in 2020, Digital transformation first, most of the company to change their business models and adapt to the new market reality. What is interesting about this is, is not that the company has been driving by the change, but this change is being driven by the customer. Now with technology, people are becoming so connected, so informed and empowered that they want businesses to be like them. Technology is teaching them that they can get whatever they want, whenever they want, how they want it. Uh, and we, we must understand that things are changing and we need to meet their expectation. If we don't, every investment we will make we miss the opportunity to drive revenue. For the first time in the human history, businesses didn't have choice to adapt themselves to a customer experience focus. So let's see what I've changed in our behavior in 2020. And for that, I think Marina, let's do a quiz. Yeah, so we, we love oops, we love quizzes here at Smart Boost. So um, I have a poll ready for you guys. Um, let me launch that and you guys can vote. So um, here we have, what industry or industries do you think have changed the most in 20 and 21? Um, and you guys can select all that apply, there's no right or wrong answer. We just wanna see which is the most popular. So go ahead and submit your votes.
Awesome, it looks like everyone has got their votes in. So let's see. So here we have our results. Uh, the most popular is all of the above, which is a safe bet. Um, and then it looks like, yeah, remote working tools. I think definitely, I mean, all of these have really adapted and changed. So thank you all for voting. Let's. Okay, go so to the it next seems slide. like all, yeah, Marina. So all the above, and I think work productivity tool, as we can see on this uh, funny picture from the SmartWoos team where we have been disrupted by remote work. And on this picture, we are uh, doing a, an exam, not a quiz, but uh, an exam this time about Google Analytics 4. Uh, it was the first time that we were doing this type of work online. Uh, no, as well, there is so many technology, new trends. Um, there are so many new things to learn from, so many things to deconstruct in order to, to see new ways to do things differently today, as the Apple Watch, um, Amazon Fetch, Uber, Instacart, Airbnb, and the Peloton that we, we're gonna talk later on uh, in that presentation has disrupt our behavior. Um, if, we, if you think how your customer will interact with your product or services in 2021, it's not gonna work, unfortunately. If you think how your customer will interact with your product or services in 2022, it might work, it's already a good start, but we need to think with our customer behavior like 2023 or 2024, and we would be on track. As decision makers in our company, we have to face accelerating change. And I think that the next slide is the graphic that show this increased rate of technology that's moved up uh, across the years. Um, and we can see from, from the beginning, very um, you know, interesting fact like the telegraph. Um, I, I went on also, you know, the our internet, uh, Microsoft, the microprocessor, the DVD was before the Walkman, um, the iPad, all these technologies, smartphone, Google, have been increased and that keep increasing exponentially. So we need to adapt ourselves to uh, those trends. If you compete at the level of your competitor with a good customer experience, even if you don't have the best product or services, you can win. People are willing to pay more if they think that they are gonna have better experience. But what does customer experience mean? And I would like to answer this question, but before let's do a quiz and talk about your last vacation spot. Yeah, so let's launch our next poll. I know it's been a while since we've taken some good vacations, but let's just see what you guys are thinking about your last vacation. Go ahead and vote. So what do you remember most about your last vacation? Great. You guys voted quickly on that one. More fun topic, maybe. Uh, cool. Let's see the results. So most people said spending time with friends and family, which was great. And then second, relaxing and the hotel. So those are the results. Interesting. Interesting. So I, I took this example because we're going to try to recreate in your mind, what was the experience like? So the first thing that you, you've been thinking and based on the answer, it was friends and family. What was the first snapshot, the first picture that came up? After when you start thinking deeper in that process, you're going to start chronologically by the departure when the first flashback would be maybe going to the airport, getting exciting, uh, traveling, 
arriving to your place, enjoying your vacation, having multiple memories snapshot about this. And after there is when you come back to work where our reality and is all about those memory that is before your vacation and after. But when we talk about experience that include both of them. Um, and that very important because the before and the after will um, determine your word of mouth. Memory work like snapshots. You remember a moment in that experience. And that part is very critical in the psychology of the customer. He tell us that we don't need to manage the full film of this experience, but specific type of moments. And those before and after are critical to help people to understand your product or services. And then the cherry on the cake, the word of mouth. Yeah, thank you, Marina. So why not we have better understanding about the definition of the customer experience is the sum of all those moments, all the snapshots that are connected to the customer across all his journey with all the touch points that make the customer an experience, a life cycle. Each touch with your company, whatever you are selling a service or product, whether it's direct or indirect, shapes the overall customer experience. We are not only talking about the actual customer after, but also before to sell a service or a product. For, the, for have a good, to have a good understanding again, the, the vacation was great, but let's take the example of this restaurant. We can go to the next time, Marina. We have this snapshot in picture is what we remember. We took a lot of time to find this restaurant. Maybe we went on Yelp. We look at a specific type of food. We find a restaurant. We look at the picture inside, the picture outdoor, um, the pricing, uh, the reviews, multiple aspects, and then you make a reservation. That was the before experience. So it was already an online experience before to go to the restaurant. Then you arrive to the restaurant and you open the door and it's a direct experience with the waiter, with the people around you. You're gonna maybe listen the sound, smell, and your sense um, will, will take effect at that time because it's in person. After it will be the menu, the table, the presentation, uh, even the candles, and at the end, the food. Of course, the food need to test well. And you enjoy that time with the person in front of you. Um, and that is an old experience, but that doesn't stop here. That is the after part of it. Uh, when you come back home, I hope that you have a good decision because if you don't, that might affect the whole experience of that restaurant the time that you spend with your wife or your husband. So the digital experience is a journey and we need to optimize it. One mistake can affect all of it. So as um, Jeff Bezos was saying, if we put ourselves in the, as a restaurant owner, your brain is not what you say, but what people say about you when you leave the room or this specific restaurant. Why not, since we know the definition of what is a customer experience, let's talk about how to optimize it. Customer journey optimization is the process of connecting and mapping the customer interaction across multiple touch points in order to direct or influence the end of end to end of the experience. Businesses who focus on optimizing the, the customer journey drive customer loyalty or retention. 
In today's customer-centric economy, the challenge is to integrate multiple channels, mobile devices, website, social media, voice search, uh, tablet, into a seamless customer journey. Omnichannel customer experience make the customer journey optimization more complicated to optimize today. So let's drive into this important part of the webinar by putting ourselves in our, our customer shoes. If we look at this uh, graphic, we arrive with a product that has been, that we need to get. So we're gonna look online, whatever is Google, there's multiple way to, to find online by referral traffic, direct traffic. And then we're gonna start comparing the pricing, the product, the reviews. Uh, and then if we are satisfied, that is the purchasing. When that is done, we have the experience of the product of the services, but after at the company level, we need to maintain and increase the loyalty to be able after to have the clients to promote or recommend your business. Are you still in the shoes of your clients? There is one very important variable is the time. Time bother clients when you pay attention to it um, and it's, it's, it's the game, it's the name of the game to give people distraction, to make this time go faster. It make it feel quicker. So the customer do something, they are busy, but for that we need to provide them distraction that can help them. So a lot of companies in the B2C industry was playing music, um, offering, different gadget to help them. In the B2B industry, they were sending podcasts, videos, or any relevant information because sometimes the sales cycle is too long. So we need to, to create those touch points between because it's the time increase with our touch point, we might lose the opportunity. As decision maker, we need to of course, eliminate, eliminate bad experience and having a customer journey world map using time factor and customer needs will help to identify and create multiple touch points. So why now is there a difference between B2B and B2C businesses? I think you have something good. for us, Marina, right? Yep, good question, Geos. Oh, don't look at the answers. Um, okay, yeah, our last poll. Let's see what you guys think. So our last one is, what are some of the main differences between a B2B and B2C customer experience? Again, you can choose all that apply. Great. So everyone got their vote in. Let's see the results. So yeah, again, all of the above kind of, I mean, safe bet. Um, and then yes, characteristics that drive sales, definitely the length of the sales cycle, length of the buying process. I mean, yeah, all of these. So really great answers. So let's see. Yeah, as you said, this they are all good answer. Uh, if we look at this comparison table between B2C and B2B, where B2C require low involvement compared to B2B with a high involvement. So the target market is larger for B2C than B2B is smaller, more niche. The purchaser, that is most of the time one person that purchases your, your B2C product. But for B2B, there is multiple people involved in that process that can be uh, the CEO, the CMO, uh, marketing director, CTO, multiple people are involved in that process. Um, B2C, most of the time, single steps. B2B, multiple steps with, of course, a longer sales cycle compared to a shorter one for B2C. And the sales driver 
for B2B is relationship and the, the client is expecting detailed information when in B2C is more recognition and repetition. So this is interesting because um, in the customer journey, it's important to do the comparison uh, because sometimes that makes some headache. Um, placing myself in the shoes of my customer, I, um, I try to understand, you know, how the, the data work uh, for, for both sides. And uh, something very interesting that I, I discover if you go to the next, next slide, Marina, is how company adapt to technology and innovation. And sometimes it's a headache to, to innovate. Um, but I want to take this example of the Cosmopolitan where I went in February with my wife for Valentine's weekend. And they decided to increase the, the experience to a new concept that we call Rose, as you guys can see here. And the project started from smartphone customer behavior, which has been the biggest disruptor of behavior in a very long time. They noticed that their customers spending so many hours on their phone when they were at a specific location. And they look at those data and it seems that it's on the Wi-Fi data that they have been collected. They were an average of 250 terms per day on their phone with over two hours per day. So when they, they see this change of the behavior, they try this experience with, with roles. So if you see, I took a screenshot of the message that I received uh, from her and uh, she's a, a resident mischief maker at the Cosmopolitan and she offer multiple opportunity like restaurant reservation, you can buy a ticket show, you can book a barber shop, you can check in, check out, and you can do much more guest service. And if we look at the result and the performance that the Cosmopolitan got with the next slide, Marina, they got 8% of all check-in use rows. 82% are highly engaged with the application. Guess who text rows spend 30 to 48% more. And guess who use rows return 11% of the time. And of those, 43% return to a direct channel. Not a third party. So this is why sometimes having technology and using the data for actual customer we, can, we are capable to disrupt a whole behavior, a whole experience. The next slide is Slack. Um, some company let customer experience come together on his phone, while other take more intentional approach. As Slack, internal approach has made it as a leader in the customer experience. Whatever the the client's request, even emoji, custom emoji, uh, to talk in different channel. They they have been listening the request of their of their user and be able to adapt to it. All the different connector. So in from one platform, we are able to to communicate from different sources. Slack has been listed by Forbes in the top ten most customer obsessed company in 2020. So customer obsession and customer centric always pay back. And here we have some other statistics that show that companies that invest in their customer journey have a higher return on marketing investment. Uh, they improve their customer success cost. They improve their average sales cycle. So this is all the benefits of having an optimizing customer journey map. If we go to the next slide, Marina, uh, customer expectations are getting higher and higher over time, keep increasing. 
we are not only competing against our own competitor, our direct competitor. We are we all compete against Uber, Airbnb, against any app or services that gives people an integrated and an intuitive experience. Because that become the standard for how people want to be engaged, how people want to be there, how people want to talk to. We need to use data to really understand your customer, not only understanding who they are, where they live, what age group they are, but going in depth analysis. Connecting data is crucial. So how we do that, how we optimize the customer journey with data. Let's take the example of Disney. Disney doesn't just want to understand who you are when you go there, when you are visiting the theme park, um, they want to know everything. They, they want to understand how you are using the theme park with this uh, magic band. When you are stopping, how long are you queuing? Where are you spending your money? And for that, they use no language processing, NLP and computer vision integrated technology to be able to interpret faces when you watch the show, when you are waiting in the line and be able to understand your emotion. User data, behavioral data that they are collecting and use different technology as machine learning and artificial intelligence to understand and analyze all those big data to be able to extract insight. So that arrived to an important part of the, of the presentation here. It's very important to identify those touch points that we were talking at the beginning. That is divided in five different category, awareness, consideration, purchase, retention, and advocacy. So I listed a couple of, um, of um, dimension into awareness. We have PR, blog, display ads. Those one are all way to attract people into the customer journey map. There is multiple way to, to convert them in the consideration stage by having forums, portfolio reviews. And we need to optimize that part of the of the customer journey to to map out our audience into it. This one are an example of how we can split it, but it should be sophisticated to be able to identify every individual touch point that would come across the customer journey map to shape the customer experience. Every touch point here is an opportunity to shape their perception to, an, to give them another experience. So from online to email, to mobile app for retention, social media, everything is all connected. That means that your customer might be unaware of their problems. Um, we need to look deeper at their customer journey to identify any bottlenecks, any issues to data to be able to, to solve or correct the customer experience. Improve it, make it better. As a result, it leads to a higher customer acquisition, retention, and drive higher revenue. For that one of the technology that we, we use is the CDP, and that's the next slide right now is one of the best tools to connect data to revenue. It's a customer data platform software that create a persistent unified customer database that is accessible to other system. Um, that has been a lot of buzz word around data platform or CDP. Even Salesforce is developing his own. SAP offer one of the best customer uh, data platform. Adobe started a real-time CDP 
And I listed on the side some other platform as Telium, Freshpoint, BlueShift. And we can also do some uh, custom development as SmartBoost is currently doing. So from that, you can collect data from any sources. You can store for indefinitely period of time. You can unify the data in a single customer profile from any point. Um, and you can distribute the data after back to any sources. So you can have all the data that impact your customer and that include weather data. If we think that the weather can impact the, the user behavior, we have economic trend data. We can have Google search train for the research states or CD data. So you can tie all together combined with your website data, including Google Analytics, transactional data, and other types of the data. And that order you to create, to create reports and perform analysis and generate new insight. The main goal is to understand that the next line, Marina, the multiple conversion paths that your customer go through. Um, where and how they overlap, you will be able to anticipate where your customer will come in contact with you so you can start interacting with them with a personalized experience. And that will generate a better user traffic, better conversion, multiple purchases, higher retention, and you will be able to promote your brand. In conclusion of this section, um, customer don't use digital, they are digital. So how can we implement a customer centric culture into our organization? So customer centricity is really popular again in all the company since 2020, there is multiple way um, to approach it. I listed a couple of, of tips for that. Um, incorporate customer feedback into the process and behavior to have the customer journey map to engage uh, executive leaders, um, integrate disparate business unit culture, transform culture top to bottom, um, having some operating model to enable customer centricity. It's an involvement of all the company, all the employees. And it's not only listening about to our customer, it's doing something with the information that you gather from those inside and they can just come from the top and to the bottom to be able to create new way to think, create new ideas, think like customer and exchange those information in the company. It's really the fundamental of the organization, thinking, attitudes, behavior. If we go to the next slide, Marina, here are the secret source of of three of those company, Amazon, where we have listed some um, quote from their uh, CMO and CX person over there. Four secret sauce. Number one, they hire for customer success. They focus on having a, a really strong customer success with and hiring talent. They put relationship first for the second point. Customers are not numbers to be measured. They analyze in revenue performance report. They are people and they, they treat them as a people, not as a number. They democratize customer data into their company. So they make it accessible for everybody to have a better understanding about how they use um, customer data and create a better experience across the department. They connect company culture to customer outcome. Um, employee are more motivated by 
customer centricity strategy when action can be linked to a result. For example, strategy to reduce customer wait times or making a transition easier for a customer can be captured in real time to highlight this is full strategy implementation. The next slide, the very important slide of, and everybody was maybe expecting for it, what is the trends for 2021 and 2022, how everything looks like. So in the last 14 months, we had to compensate our physical loss, losses with new digital interfaces, new technology, uh, new behavior, new habits. Everything has been changed, has been disrupted. Um, we talk about accelerating time at the beginning of the, the webinar. Everything won't be back to normal. Why? Because we have new habits. We have new online behavior. We have new online expectation. All businesses are realizing that they need to focus on customer retention because that helped in 2020. It was hard to acquire, but the best way was to retain. So they understood that customer experience is, is not an option anymore, has to be part of the culture and the strategy. So this is the post COVID effect. They want to keep investing in customer experience because it has been paying for 2020. The trend number two, in the past, it was enough for companies to just offer a passive service um, and expect you know, some value in the relationship with the clients um, and increase the relationship. Some company offer now Apple Watches for them to be more healthy. So we, we are going another step in the relationship where it's not only offering passive services or passive product, but more product related to what happened around us. So we are, they are trying to create relationship and that is part of the customer success. And that is four important thing to remember here. Most of the company study their clients to make sure that they can provide any help at any time. They are very transparent with them. They give relevant advice, whatever is the sales cycle, whatever if they are clients for one, two, three, four, five years, and they communicate, communicate, and communicate with them in the purpose to create relationship. So add value to customer relationship is gonna be the trend number two for the next two years. The other one is digital to another level. Since everything is going digital now, the pandemic gave a push, of course, but it's not necessarily a decrease. Even in real life experience is possible now, uh, we still see increase in the possibility of digital experience or the way we spread the content online. The words that came out from the, the pandemic are digital, live and together. They are those three words. And those three words has been used by a company. And I was talking about it at the beginning, Paraton. It's a fascinating company. This started with people might think it's an expensive bike to walk out from the living room. But at the end, it's a full community. In the past, they were offering uh, just training classes somewhere live, uh, but in the middle of the night and offline. It was nothing in the middle. No, you can start live session with multiple people at the same time, every five minutes. This is kind of the Netflix of working out. You type live session, you have the little board and Marina knows about it, where you can see how all of them are performing what's motivate them, what type of workout they are doing, and you can benchmark your statistic with other. So we can definitely think that they are digital, they go live and together. 
the other trend, it's augmented reality or virtual reality. It's incredible how that tool can, can change life or, or vision. As we can see on this screen, you are capable to put your phone in using augmented reality technology to see what is around you directly. Imagine that you are in architecture. Imagine that you are in the real estate. You can let people walk into a building. You can walk around the building so they can walk in the backyard. They can come back in the living room and they can see how the property looks like just through augmented reality when the construction hasn't started yet. Everything that is not automatically done physically or was automatically done physically before COVID-19 will be disrupted. I think that in the next year, in the next two years, we are going to see digital alternatives of extremely high quality that will make a difference in the customer experience. The last one, the number five, is zero thinking with AI. AI, data, and that is between AI and data, machine learning, uh, modeling, modeling, algorithm, ML, help to, to collect data from the actual user experience to be able to implement uh, a new way to meet the expectation. And for that is an example of Panera Bread, which is a large bakery chain in the country, really cool company. And now they have a Panera Bread and coffee subscription when you pay a monthly fee and then you just go in the store, in the restaurant that you can easily find to your phone and get as much coffee you want. You don't need to worry anymore. You just walk in and you get your coffee. You don't have to think about where to get your coffee. You don't have to think about how much it's gonna cost. It's part of the day-to-day, -day. it's part of Panera solution and it's becoming your daily routine. From zero effort to zero thinking, a trend that we are going to see in the next couple of years in the B2B and B2C industry is this type of philosophy. Subscription, zero thinking to deliver a good pressure. The, the work in the future and we have, we must live in the future. Here I put some statistic um, where brands with superior customer experience bring in 5.7 times more revenue than competitors that lag in CX. Company that excel in CX grow revenue four to eight percent above the market. 66% of customers consider customer service to be a deal breaker when buying something. And then the last one, optimizing CX, achieve a revenue growth of five, ten percent, and cost reduction of fifteen to twenty-five percent in the two, three years. So we can see that the power of CX is hidden between connected the dots together to be able and capable to drive revenue. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shia. So um, I know we had a longer presentation, so now it's time for our Q&A session. We'll take about five minutes to answer questions. We got some really good ones um, come through for, for, from some of our participants. So let me pull up some of our uh, questions. So um, we talked about this a bit already, but do you think virtual experiences will continue as a trend beyond the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, definitely. So we talk about the construction industry. We talk about the real estate industry. It's a, it's a tool that is going to be used in multiple other industry, um, manufacturing, uh, education, a lot of company um, doing HVAC, 
um, training online use VR and augmented reality would be would be part of uh, multiple way to organize things into the house even the B2C industry. There is, it's forecasted that AR will grow uh, 73% in the next five years. And I think that is, we're talking about 50 billion in the industry. Wow. Yeah, um, I like this next question because um, I know we covered a lot in this presentation, but I like this question, especially for small business owners. Um, what are some small improvements a business can make to improve customer experience? Uh, the, that's a really great question. The first thing is to understand their customer. Um, that is the way that we, we, sometimes we think we understand them, but it's not the way it is. So always rely to data to have the perfect understanding about how customer eye, we cannot make assumption um, and we need to open to new strategy uh, to align to their uh, behavior change. Um, launch is, launching a, a subscription-based model um, is becoming popular. So we always need to question ourselves, is it the right way to approach uh, our client, our customer? Um, and every new technology, every innovation that we hear around us, we always need to apply to our, our client, our customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that can be as simple as like we do here, creating um, buyer journeys for our clients or mm -hmm. you know, looking in Google Analytics to look at that data, really understanding your customer. Um, great, and maybe one last question. Um, how can businesses address and be better prepared for future uncertainties? Yeah, that's a good question. I think is, as I was saying in the presentation, we, we need to think ahead like 2023 or 2024 is a, good, is a good point. So there is already technology that they are um, increasing, evolving now. So we need to, to use those trends to be able to project ourselves and use those trends in, in, in the future. So we need to, to adapt our strategy based on trends uh, to be able to deliver a great user and customer experience and be always on the top of the competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Great. So I think this end our webinar, Marina, correct? Thank you everyone. Yep.